All right, I'm going to make this extremely short. It's very, very simple. I am saying that light is dark energy, and it's also dark matter, and it, it's in the vacuum of space as it travels from the sun. It's obviously traveling from the sun. We know that. And it's heading towards the earth. It hits the earth. We know that. It's energy when we left. We know that. It's energy when it hits. We know that. It powers solar cells. It grows plants. It does all those things. It has to be energy in the middle. We just don't see it. It's dark. What happens is it, from the star or sun, or our sun, we're, it leaves, and it's, uh, they're electrons. They're vortex particles, uh, is the theory. It's, it's, it's a new theory that isn't unproven, but it's, we have a lot of evidence. Anyway, it's spinning particle, and that creates the wave. You see the wave, and it's a particle. And depending upon the frequency, that creates the angular momentum, which creates the mass. So here's the deal. you got particles are spinning electrons. And then no, no nuclear bits at all. And that's why you don't see them. The entire universe is filled with this energy and this matter. And it is the animating matter of life. It's there to be used to start life and to create energy to do all kinds of things. Now, those particles are spinning electrons. Uh, the, the frequency of the spin times their weight, a uh, resting weight, which is supposed to be this, equals the mass. The energy equals the mass, that's all. When it comes down and it smacks into something, it has nucleated particles, which means it has electron clouds around a nucleus. It bounces off. What it bounces off, it gives off light. What it doesn't bounce off is absorbs as heat. And it is absorbed at heat in what they call quantum. So it jumps like and it takes a certain energy level to do that. And we see that in spectroscopy. So that is known. We see light bouncing off of things, that's known. We feel the heat, that's known. So all of this stuff is obviously, and it's, it's all known. Now, then you go down how much stuff is hitting the earth because now it's, th there's a weight to this stuff. I just showed you that. They say that this is, this is how much it weighs. Now, the earth is growing like unbelievably. Look at this. The average per square meter, NASA says, is 1,360 watts per square meter. And that's, I believe, per hour. They don't say that, but I'm sure that's what it is times a million, which is a million square meters in a square kilometer, times 510 million square kilometers, which is the Earth's, they say, is the surface. And it's even more than that because it's hitting the atmosphere. But anyway, let's, but there is some radiation. Anyway, that would be the watts of the Earth. Now, the watts of the Earth times the electrons in a watt, which weigh that this here, is how much the Earth is growing per hour. All right, these are particles that were captured by Rodney Warren. He's doing the uh, the experiments, but I believe this is a torus, and and somehow the electron activity does what you would think. Of, I think it might be capacitive inductance, and it's almost doing like an AC thing. I mean, look at it. The whites here, a little white spike coming out here, whites over a spike here. I think it's 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 doing a flip flop inside there, like AC. Anyway, over here are the energy levels uh, of. Okay, these are those little particles, and we have them both in red and green, which is the two colors of the lasers we've been using, and which would indicate to me that the structure is, is um, consistent, and the color, which indicates the energy, is uh, dependent upon the frequency. Now, this particular shot, and they all do the same thing that we're showing here, there's a vortex up in here, I don't know if you can see that up in this area here, and you you won't you can't see it in a shot, but they come out in in a vortex spray, a, a, a shower. Hold on a second. All right, this is the three dimensions of of a light propagation wave um, without hitting a slit. We're just ca capturing that literally in a mist in air. I honestly don't see how this can possibly be denied. This is what I'm saying is the vortex particle. Now look at what I'm saying is happening here. It, it, it makes a right hand spin. You see, just like this. It's coming down and it's hitting right like this. This is exactly what we're doing. Now it had gone through uh, um, uh, a Venturi slip way back here. And it came down to here spinning 
into this venture uh, slot. Well, it was spinning into the slot, and we're picking up the, the, the radiation down here. Let's put it that way. So it's spinning through the slot, and as it spins through the slot, you can see that it it comes off the slot and in, and it gets denser here, and then here it can't penetrate, so it's over the surface, and then poop, it drops back in again here, and you get a dense color here, and then you get it drops off again. Now, so it literally is is doing a right hand spin into the Venturi slot. And you can see the, the, the pattern. It's very, very apparent. Alright, now, I, I've been talking about these Venturis. Well, this is a Venturi here. There's a round object here and a round pin here. And the light of the laser is being shined through and hitting there. Now, because of the architecture of the slit, it creates what's called a venturi, which compresses anything that comes in, and the only thing it can do is accelerate. There is no option. So it has to accelerate, and when it does, it creates this chaotic white high-frequency light, which I believe is Cherenko radiation, which it, it, now, as it exits this way and sprays all this white stuff, what it's spraying into is uncompressed space, normal space. So over here the light disc that we saw before is now literally being sucked, you see that? Right into that vortex because the vortex now is creating acceleration. In, in old carbureted cars it was it would atomize it and it's atomizing it. Look at if you show the atomization of a Venturi, that's it. Light is water, light compresses, Light fills the vacuum of space as dark energy. And when it hits things, it grows plants, it warms things, and it is the breath of God. I mean, I could go all day with the shots Rodney sends me. He's, he's very prolific. And these are the trails of the electron. They're, they're the spinning vortex particles. And that's sort of slit. This is a single slit. Same thing, Venturi. So that we can accelerate the light and we can see what happens when it cascades back into uncompressed space. And it's very apparent what happens. 